Welcome to the Streamline to Scale podcast, where we help online business owners just like you go from six to seven figures with ease. I'm Erin Persinger, and after years of working with companies to achieve sustainable growth, I've learned that the key to success lies in simplicity. Tune in to the Streamline to Scale podcast, where we're turning business dreams into reality. Hey there, welcome back to the Streamline to Scale podcast. I'm Erin Persinger, CEO of Premier Virtual Operations, owner of the Ethical Hiring Hub Facebook group, and creator of this podcast, Streamline to Scale. I'm excited to meet you here today to talk about becoming a CEO and developing your CEO cadence. So today we're going to talk about the shift that online business owners make from solopreneurs to CEO and how they can develop their CEO cadence to match that shift and fit into their business. A lot of people meet me right at this spot, right where they're transitioning from being a one hit wonder all on their own to building a team and really taking their business to the next level and creating that sustainable long-term business model where they step into a CEO role and out of the day-to-day more and more. As you know, there are several challenges that face solopreneurs in the online space And we feel it a little bit more frequently in the online space due to the fast-paced environment and just the sheer amount of work that we have to keep up with to keep ourselves at the forefront of the marketing and our brand and all the things. So as you're a solopreneur, several things can weigh your business down. First, you can have limited resources as a solopreneur, and that can come even as skill sets your limited time, of course, because you just can't get to everything. And then your skill set, as in you're great at your craft, but there's probably other areas in the business that are not your cup of tea. For example, in my business, I'm not creative. I'm not good at the creative. I really don't love social media. My team, on the other hand, like I have a phenomenal audio person that's editing this podcast right now because that is not my cup of tea. I would become overwhelmed and frustrated if that was my job. As a solopreneur, though, I had to do all of these things on my own. Even if they weren't the best use of my time, I didn't have anybody else to support me. So we face that as solopreneurs. We also can easily become overwhelmed with the workload and face burnout a lot quicker as a solopreneur. It goes to reason that if you're doing all the things, you're working more hours, you can trend towards burnout a lot faster than someone who has a supportive team behind them who's picking up the slack. There's been times in my business where I physically was in a place that I couldn't show up. I couldn't be here for whatever reason. Like I had sick family. I had things going on with my kids. My team could handle that. You don't have that luxury as a solopreneur. And we've built the systems and processes into my business now that if I need a day to go show up and be somewhere else, it's fine. I can take it. So I don't have to be as worried about burnout in my business and burnout for myself because I have people who always have my back. And then also as a solopreneur, you lack scalability that you have as a CEO, right? Because you are doing all the things. So to bring in new business, new growth, to expand your product lines, all of those things become very hard because you're caught in the day-to-day things when you should be out working on the growth of the business. And that's just not always possible. You also can get caught up in small tasks that have to be done, but really aren't the best use of your time. But if you're a solopreneur, someone has to do them and that someone is always you. So those are some reasons why it's not ideal to stay in the solopreneur space in the online industry for very long. We move very quick over here, as I said before. So that means that you have to be able to pivot You have to be able to get things done super fast or your business will stay stagnant. It'll almost be like you're treading through water all the time. So what we want to do is we want to shift from being a solopreneur into the CEO. And what that just means is you bring people in that are going to help you, support you, and they are ready to move your business to the next level with you. So now what does it mean when we talk about developing a CEO cadence? CEO cadence is just a rhythm, a tempo, and the things that the CEO does to carry out their responsibilities. It's the frequency, the timing, the consistency, which with the CEO executes their responsibilities within the business. So it's increasingly important in the online space that we develop a good CEO cadence, again, because of the fast paced nature of a digital environment. So you have to have a regular cycle of activities and processes 
that really align with the nature of the online market, right? A well-defined CEO cadence Make sure that you have in place effective leadership, your operations run smoothly, and that you achieve your business objectives. And that's kind of the goal behind your CEO cadence. It's your job to move, to steer your ship forward and to direct the people on your ship to do ship to do what they need to do. So it's really about establishing the leadership and being proactive in nature instead of reactive. You inspire your team, you create the growth, and you keep up with the rapidly evolving digital space. Jenny Rometty, who was the CEO of IBM, I believe, said the CEO's role is not just about driving results, but also creating a culture of excellence, accountability, and innovation. And that is your role as you transition into the CEO, because now you're not only worried about yourself, but you're also transitioning till you have to focus on your team. You have to make sure that everybody is rowing the ship the same way towards the same destination. So we're going to talk about five steps that you can take to develop your CEO cadence. So the first step is that you will define your vision and goals. Now, everyone knows that a company without vision stays stagnant. You have to have visions. You have to have goals. I'm not a huge proponent of year-long goals in the online space because things do move so quickly. We have to pivot faster than other industries a lot of times. And especially in the minute details of like how we're going to market, things like that can change very quickly for us. So I'm more in the camp that creates quarterly goals and focus on like the 12 week year philosophy. I don't know if you've ever read the book, the 12 week year, but that's where you really break down your quote unquote year until you look at it in terms of quarters, as opposed to the whole entire year at once. That's very effective in the online space because we move faster and we have to be able to pivot quickly. But even in those quarterly goals that you still need to have the goals, (laughs) So I see a lot of people and they're just kind of floating along in their business. They don't know what's coming next. They they don't have established income goals they want to hit and they're not measuring the goals to see if where they're landing. Another common problem I see when people set the goals in their business is that they don't share them with their team. So then the team is just behind the scenes working, working, working. And it feels like they're just throwing spaghetti at the wall because they don't understand what they're working towards. So it's very important for you to share your goals and your vision with the team because that helps everyone move in a cohesive manner because they understand what they're striving for. And also, if you've hired your team with intention and purpose, they should be bought into your vision. And anything that you can do to show the team that you're moving towards that vision helps with productivity, helps with keep with um, team happiness, all of those things. So we want to establish specific goals that are measurable and also align with your vision. You want to articulate those to the rest of the team. And you also want to make sure that your goals are reasonable, right? We don't want to plan goals that everyone knows the SMART goals and all those things, but we don't want to plan for outlandish goals that will never hit. And then you want to track progress towards those goals frequently and with intention, make sure you're always tracking your progress. So that's first step to developing your CEO cadence is you're going to define your visions and your goals. You're going to set standard times for when you do that. And then the second thing is you're going to establish strategic planning and review cycles. So in my world, what we call these are CEO days. Now, I know some businesses have CEO weeks. I know some people do one day a week. Some people do one entire week a month. I do one day a week in my own business. And what you do is this is your day that you set aside with intention that you are going to do strategic planning within your business. You're going to evaluate things that are working, things that aren't working, your industry, your competitors, all of the things that are happening in your business. And then this is where you refine your strategies and your goes back to your goals because sometimes maybe they're not feasible anymore. And you find that out on a CEO day rather than waiting till the end of the quarter. We're very strategic in the things that we plan, the things that we do. We're always measuring, assessing, and planning based off our measurements and assessments. So that moves me into step number three, where you're going to implement effective 
decision-making processes. I call that data-driven strategy. So that means that your decisions are concrete and sound. You're not just jumping into decisions based on a whim, but you're actually making decisions off of number one, do they align with your goals? Number two, what your numbers say. People often fail to make decisions based on the numbers. It's the biggest mistake you can make. You'll hear me say sometimes that if you have hired a business coach and they don't understand the back-end numbers of your business, or if you've hired a strategist, if you've hired a consultant, and they don't understand the numbers that relate specific to their area, like for example, you hire a marketing consultant and they don't understand how to read the marketing numbers, KPIs, and things like that behind your business, run the other way because you don't want someone in your business who doesn't understand your numbers. Now, I used to be an accountant, former online life and former pre-kid life, I say. I was an accountant. So I obviously heavy on the focus of the numbers, but I will tell you that I've sat in many business meetings where the numbers quickly change our decision as to what we're going to do next. And that's the right move to make because the numbers are not showing us the data that we're being successful in the current path. So you have to analyze your numbers frequently and use those numbers to make data-driven decisions, as I call it. So you analyze and adjust based on the numbers. So we that was number three. Number four is you're going to foster a culture of communication and collaboration. Now, I am sure you have heard me say this time and time again, that everything in your team really comes down to communication and you set the tone for communication. People come to me in their business quite frequently and they want to know why their team members are not understanding their directions, why they're not asking questions, why things aren't getting done as quickly as they think they should be getting done. And all of that always comes back to communications. You set the standard for communications in your business. If you were in an office, this would be called the open door policy, right? You have people have the ability to come in, stop by, ask questions, give suggestions, give feedback, all of those things from your team. In the online space, we don't have that. You are not down the hall from your team member. So you need to make sure you establish avenues for communication, for feedback, for input from your team, and that you are open and transparent with the communication in your organization. So you want to have regularly set times for communication that everyone knows what to expect. You want to have places where everyone's communicating. You want to encourage participation, feedback, and idea sharing. And then you also want to make sure that you regularly share updates like on your goals, on your visions, all those things. So in when we bring clients on, we actually recommend one of the very first things that we have clients do, whether they come through our group program or their one-on-one client. The first thing we do is establish a place for communication. We create a communication document where this is our main communication SOP. You're going to communicate here. You can expect answers at this time. We're going to have weekly meetings. We're going to have weekly check-ins, reviews. However, it works best for your business, and that's customized based on what your specific business needs, all of that needs to be very clear and laid out so your existing team members and any new team members you have come in understand how communication flows through your business. This is the difference between a lackluster team and a high-performing team because communication is key. You hear that in everything, right? Relationships marriage, but it's true in your business. Communication is the key to moving your business to the next level. And then really step five of developing your CEO cadence is to cultivate your own personal and professional development. You have to lead by example. And one of the things that you want to do by example is you want to invest in your own growth as a leader. Your team will feel that. They will see that. They will understand that you're investing in yourself. They'll know that you care about the business. You care about them. If you need mentorship or coaching, invest in mentorship or coaching to become a better leader. You need to stay up to date on the trends, the best practices, all the things. And then Also, once you have invested in your own growth as a leader, you encourage the team to invest in their growth as a leader. And it's not just professional growth, also personal growth on the personal side. You want to 
take care of yourself, self-care. You want to have good work-life balance and you want that to trickle down to your team because the best businesses are the ones that have that good work-life balance. You're investing in yourself. You're growing. You're moving to the next level. No one wants to stay stagnant. You don't want your team stagnant, you stagnant, or your business to be stagnant. You always want to be pushing to the next level. So that's my five steps for you developing a CEO cadence once you come out of being the solopreneur. So our goal is to shift away from the solopreneur life into the CEO cadence. And the CEO cadence covers five steps in simplicity. Define your vision and goals, establish strategic planning and review cycles, implement effective data-driven decisions, foster a culture of communication, and then cultivate your personal and professional growth. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. If you have questions about how to become the best CEO you can be, certainly reach out to us. We offer programs that we can put you through to develop you into leaders and to shore up your team so you can move to the next level with ease. We're always ready to chat, reach out, email, social media. And of course, if you've enjoyed this episode, please give us a comment. And of course, if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. We love to hear from you and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to the Streamline to Scale podcast. We hope you gained valuable insights on scaling and streamlining your business. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Remember, growing your online business can be easy by focusing on developing lean, effective teams, creating simple systems, and implementing smart business practices, you can take your business to the next level. And if you're ready to take action and start growing your business today, head over to our website at premiervirtualoperations.com to learn more about our services and how we can help you reach your business goals. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode of Streamline to Scale.